The Carby 98 Short, or K98K, is a breech-loading magazine rifle of the bolt type with a cock on open action. It weighs 8 pounds, 10 ounces, and is 43.7 inches long. The parts of the K98K include the barrel, sight assembly, bolt, stock, handguard, metal fittings, and cleaning rod. It is chambered for the 8mm Mauser cartridge with an integral magazine capacity of 5 rounds. It can be loaded with loading strips of 5 cartridges. On the front side of the receiver bridge is found the slot for the loading strips. The barrel is 23.62 inches long, with the rifling being 4 grooves with a right hand twist of 1 and 9.45 inches. The front sight is an inverted V-blade that is wedged into the front sight base and adjusted at the factory. The rear of the front sight base is serrated to prevent glare. Later models were equipped with a metal hood to protect the front sight. The rear sight is a V-notch on the end of a sight leaf attached to the rear sight base. The rear sight can be set from 100 to 2000 meters in 50 meter increments. The distance marks are found on the upper and lower side of the sight leaf. To set the sight, the sight slide is set on the appropriate distance mark. For this, the spring loaded button is pushed in to the left and thereby releases the nose from the rest on the right side of the sight leaf. To set the sight, the button is released and the button nose rests in. On top, the sight slide is set with the front edge on the marks. The sight leaf is lifted up for setting the sights on the lower side. With the sight up, it is set with the rear edge on the marks. The sight is then lowered back down. There is no user adjustment for windage on the sights. The cylinder bolt has two locking lugs and a firing pin safety. The follower serves as a bolt catch when the last cartridge is ejected. At the rear of the bolt is the safety wing. The rifle is saved by the thumb and index finger of the right hand by turning the safety wing toward the right. For unsafing, the reverse is performed. When safe, the bolt handle is locked down and the trigger is disengaged. The rifle can only be saved while the rifle is cocked. When the safety is placed in the vertical position, the bolt is not locked but the trigger is disengaged. This position is used for disassembly. On the left side of the receiver at the rear is the bolt holder which limits the rearward motion of the bolt and retains the bolt in the receiver until it is pulled to the side. On the bottom of the bolt are two gas exit openings for venting gas down into the magazine if needed. The trigger pull weight is an average of five and a half pounds. Contained in the front of the stock below the barrel is a cleaning rod section. The cleaning rod serves for putting the carbines together in groups stacked as pyramids and in case of need for removing a foreign body from the inside of the barrel. For this, four rod sections are screwed together. At the front, the cleaning rod ends in a head that can be used for attaching swabs. The head is equipped with an inside thread for screwing in another cleaning rod. At the rear are the threads for screwing into another cleaning rod and screwing into the cleaning rod holder. The lower ring includes an eye on the left side used for attaching the carbine sling. The second attachment point for the sling is the vertical notch in the buttstock of the rifle. Installation of the sling is covered in a separate training film. 
A plunger plate is located in the stock. This is used to disassemble the bolt. Bolt disassembly is covered in the field strip and detailed disassembly training films. The next video in the series will cover field stripping the K98K. Thanks for watching. If you found this video interesting or helpful, go ahead and give the video a like and subscribe to the channel. Then let us know what you thought or would like to see with a comment. If you would like to support the channel, you can become a member on Patreon or YouTube or a subscriber on Player. Links to these are in the description below. For more information on this farm and others, head on over to historyandfirearms.com.